Hi, today's good person to know is Carmen Apriente. He's a professor at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience, and his talk is on depression and the immune system. Just for clarification, Carmen A says depression is a clinical condition of persistent sadness, lack of hope and lack of motivation, and that the immune system is a biological system of cells that stops viruses and bacteria and also protects us from internal traumas. Now, as you'll see in this video, Carmen A is a massive Madonna and Lady Gaga fan. Huge. His talk was pleasurable to listen to because when key milestones were discovered, the lecture theatre turned into a dance floor and quite literally people were singing to the music. When Madonna first launched herself in 1982, it was always thought that the brain influenced the immune system. But over time, there's been a complete shift and in 1995, everything was about how the brain was communicating with the immune system. By the time Lady Gaga hit the screen, in 2008, a research paper discovered that the immune system really does influence the brain and can make one depressed. And Carmen A and his team wanted to know how inflammation could affect the brain structure and more specifically wanted to understand if inflammation could change a certain part of the brain that regulated emotional controls. Now, I don't want to explain or go into what he discovered because I really want you to watch this video, but it's absolutely fascinating. And if you know somebody who's depressed or you are depressed, then you'll just understand how it can engulf and take over your complete life. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. We all know what depression is. This clinical condition, persistent sadness, a lack of hope, lack of motivation. We also know what the immune system is. You know, this, this biological system of cells that allow us to stop virus and bacteria, but also protect us from internal trauma. More importantly, it's a system that can influence our behavior. At the beginning, the relationship between the brain and the immune system was really hierarchical with the brain on top. It was all about the brain influencing the immune system. There's been a switch, a complete shift in the change in our understanding, with the immune system really becoming the most important, or one of the most important biological systems in the body. This psychoneuroimmunology starts in 1982. You probably remember who else starts in 1982. The immune take control. She great. In 1982, another a really important paper came out. It was really revolutionary in our understanding of the relationship between the brain and the immune system. This is our understanding of what conditioning is. Ring a bell and a dog doesn't know this. You ring a bell and you give the dog food, the dog starts salivating. You do that long enough, repeat it enough, and then you ring the bell and the dog salivates even without food. You can understand this from a brain point of view. Brain stimuli, brain reaction. But what this paper shows is that you can condition the immune system through a brain stimuli. Over the next 10 years or so, there were at least 30 or 40 studies trying to understand the relationship between stress in the immune system and depression in the immune system. So, we arrived to 1991. <laughs> I just become a medical doctor. In Italy, you have to do an MD every time, you know, when you become a medical doctor. And my MD was on alterazione del sistema immunitario in un campione di pazienti depressi anziani. So, normal immune function in, in all the depressed patients. So, you can see, I always loved this field. And I managed to publish this data in 1995. That's about the effect of a cytokine. So the effect of a substance that <coughs> activates the immune system on the glucocorticoid receptor, which are the receptor for our stress hormones. These cells um, have this receptor, which is called the glucocorticoid receptor, which is a receptor for stress hormones. So this receptor participates in the regulation of stress hormones. It's, a, it's, all, you know, it's in effect a receptor that is in the brain. If you then activate the receptor by giving stress hormones to the cells, the receptor nicely moves from the outside to the inside of the cells. But if you then treat cells with an inflammatory signal, with interleukin-1, and then put the stress hormones on top, the receptor doesn't work anymore. Now, why is this important? Well, up to that point, as I've said, everything was about the brain communicating with the immune system. This paper was one, one of the first papers showing that the immune system regulates brain function, regulates stress function, as much as stress regulates the immune system. Yeah. 
very exciting. This model is studying patients with a viral hepatitis. Even of viral hepatitis is interferon alpha. So you stimulate the immune function through a powerful immune activation um, to treat hepatitis B and hepatitis C. So it's a tool to see how does increased immune function leads to depression, if you like, how the immune system regulates the brain rather than the other way around. So these are data from a British court in which you can see on the x-axis, the time, because treatment with interferon alpha lasts up to one year, so 50 weeks. And on the y-axis, you can see depressive symptoms. You can just see depressive symptoms going up and up and up. So this is about <coughs> immune function making you feel depressed. So the communication is also active. So we published in 2005 in Molecular Psychiatry that patients that develop more depression and more fatigue during interferon alpha are also likely to show less virological response. Immune activation leads to depression, but depression leads to abnormal immune function so that the virus does is not cleared. In 2008, there are other papers arrived which changed the field, and we also know who else arrived in 2008. Well, when I saw this, I was just blown away. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, people make fun of me because I'm such a fan of Lady Gaga, but I truly really like her. In 2008, this paper came out from Robert Dancer. He is really one of the world leaders in research on depression and inflammation. And he just spelled it out, just spelled it out the way that you know, all of us wanted to say. A sickness behavior is a technical term. Actually, just mean the symptoms that we all experience when we, are, when we have a bad flu, lack of energy, we just don't want to leave the bed, we don't want to go out, you know, we are irritable, we don't have any appetite. This is just a physiological reaction to inflammation that the body activates to allow us to conserve energy and fight the infection. For the first time, he really said, it's not about the brain influencing the immune system. Yeah, maybe there's a little bit of effect. But it's the immune system that can really influence the brain, that can really make, them, make you depressed. Describe two mechanisms. We wanted to know more. We wanted to know how does the inflammation affect brain structure. We wanted to understand whether inflammation could change the structure of the hippocampus, which is one of the brain areas that, as you all know, is most important for emotional control. A couple of years later, we published this paper, Infracetical Psychosis, so a paper in, not in depression, but still a group of people with mental health problems and high level of stress. So just looking at the structure of something is not enough. We wanted to look at the cellular level. We used our famous depression in a dish model. And one of the things we could do is in create inflammatory status in the dish. And if you do that, you have less neurogenesis. So you have less new neurons produced. And we published this in 2012, 2013 now. <laughs> the likelihood of treatment or response to antidepressant treatment by measuring new biomarkers. So this is a very simple scheme. You measure interleukin-1 and MIF, macrophage inhibiting factor. And based on the levels, you can decide whether the patient are green, so they will respond to antidepressant. They are red, they will not respond to antidepressant. Or they are orange, they have 50% of chance to respond. We are looking at the effect of interferon alpha on mRNA level. I think this is shown is that to develop depression, you need to be vulnerable, biologically vulnerable, to an immune challenge. That, that is make you depressed. So when does this relationship between depression and immune system start? Does it start already in utero? Are mom who are depressed in pregnancy already have high level of inflammation? Well, the answer is yes. 